You've said about a dozen times at least that you've ripped up the agreement and that that makes an election more likely. But you've been asked several times and you won't answer. Do you have confidence in the Trudeau government as they stand now? I will be a clear again. We have absolutely ripped up the agreement with Justin Trudeau, and that but means that, an that, election is more likely. Clear. That's and, not clear. You're and an election, whenever that election comes, we'll be ready to fight it. And the vision around that election is going to be an important one. Canadians will have to make a choice. But can we get can an answer? Corporate controlled conservatives, they're going to let their corporate buddies rip you off even more. Or new Democrats are going to save you money on your rent and your groceries. That's a choice that Canadians will have to make. Can we get an answer? I will look at any vote that comes before us and we will make a decision in the best interest of Canadians as any minority government normally operates. Hi, Mr. Singh, Laura Stone, Globe and Mail. I think a lot of Canadians watching this right now might be a bit baffled by the political posturing that's going on. You've propped up the government for two years. Now, all of a sudden, they're terrible because of some vague notion of corporate greed. And you're refusing to say whether you'll bring down the government at the first opportunity. What is the point of all this, sir? We have been very clear. We accomplished some significant things for Canadians. We got dental care for millions of Canadians. We're able to get the first steps on pharmacare. we are able to get things done that are going to make people's lives better. But it became very clear to me, after having got these important things done, that people need more. And Justin Trudeau is unwilling, does not have the courage, doesn't have the strength, and is too beholden to corporations to stop big corporations from ripping off Canadians, which is driving up the cost of groceries and driving up the cost of rent. So we are now, we've ripped up the agreement, and we're going to move into a vote-by-vote -vote basis. So any decision that comes before us will make based on what's in the best interest of Canadians. But let us be clear, this absolutely means an election is more likely. And that election is going to be about an important choice between the cuts of Pierre Polyev or New Democrats who want to build a better future for you. You, really, you announced that you've ripped up this agreement or cancelled it about five days after Mr. Polyev challenged you to do so. Why did you only come out after the Conservatives put pressure on you? And was it a mistake for you to not do this earlier? Uh, I will never, <laughs> ever take advice from Pierre Bolyev, who wants to destroy our healthcare system, who wants to cut pensions for seniors, who wants to let his corporate buddies rip off Canadians even more. I will never, ever take advice from Pierre Bolyev. Clearly, and my team can give you some more details on this, we filmed this video way before that came out. And, and to be honest with you, to be frank with you, Pierre Bolyev has been saying to tear up the agreement since two years ago. So no, it has nothing to do with Pierre Polyev at all. It's a silly claim of Pierre Polyev, which he often makes and something that he likes to make up. But, but it is an important choice that's in front of Canadians. Uh, we have ripped up this agreement. We've made this decision. We've gotten things done for Canadians. And now there will be a choice for Canadians to make. What type of country do we want to build? Do you want to build a country where Pierre Polyev throws fuel on the fire of corporate greed, lets his corporate buddies have free reign to rip you off, to rent evict you, to jack up your rents, to jack up the price of your groceries, or a vision where new Democrats give people hope, where we lower the price of your groceries, where we lower the cost of your rent, where we say no to corporate greed that is hurting Canadians, and we say yes to people. That's a choice in front of Canadians, and that's a choice I'm presenting today. Hi, Joe Breen with the, the National Post. <clears throat> um, you've made it clear that the railway uh, stoppage and lockout was a major factor in your decision to end this agreement. Um, my question is, would you have allowed that stoppage to go on indefinitely? And if not, what would you have done differently? Well, on the railway stoppage, it's, an, it's a very important question. And, and it's important to look at what actually went on. You have two large, highly profitable corporations, CN and CPKC that both, in effect, if you look at the timing, it's pretty suspect, colluded to set up a scenario where both, both, of, the, both of those companies were in a, in a labor dispute at the same time. If you look at the way that, that panned out, it's not coincidence that it seems every time they both time it to do it together. Then you look at their behavior. The workers did not even go on strike. The workers were locked out by the corporation. And instead of putting the blame on the corporation, CP and C, CP, CPKC and CN Rail, people often say, well, you know, the workers were, the workers are on strike because they want to keep Canadians safe. They're on, they were going to go on strike and they wanted to raise concerns about safety. And instead of letting this be negotiated at the negotiating table, Justin Trudeau decided to reward basically bad faith, reward these corporations that are already 
taking advantage of these workers and negotiating in bad faith, he rewarded that bad faith. That absolutely added to the evidence that we had that Justin Trudeau and the Liberals are too beholden to corporate interests to actually stand up to them, to stand up for Canadians. So uh, that is an important example. And I want to make it clear, if there was any disruption in goods, the fault would go squarely at the feet of CP and uh, CPKC and CN Rail. They're the ones, in one case, that locked out the workers. The workers didn't even go on strike yet. So it would be their fault that consumers and people weren't able to get the goods that they needed. All they need to do is negotiate fairly and ensure that the safety concerns of the workers were met and negotiate a fair deal. That's what would have avoided any of the problems. But Justin Trudeau and the Liberals sided with big corporations again. And, and we're, we're now seeing the forced binding arbitration, which is a horrible decision, hurts working people, and sets a bad precedent. Hi, Mr. Singh, Jordan Olmsted with the Canadian Press. Uh, um, aren't you worried that this move could jeopardize the programs that your party has been fighting for, such as PharmaCare? I appreciate the question. I want to be very clear on this point. If any of the programs do not move forward, it is the fault of Justin Trudeau. He has all the tools necessary to move forward. And if he does not move forward on PharmaCare, even though it's been passed in Parliament, if he doesn't move to the next phase on dental care, even though all the legislation necessary has been passed, then it is his fault. It will be the Liberals' fault. And if they fail to deliver, I will finish the job when I'm Prime Minister. We will now go to Raisa Patel with the Toronto Star. Please go ahead. Mr. Singh, thanks for taking our questions. You've mentioned corporate greed many times as the reason why you're exiting the deal. I feel like everything you've said today and yesterday were things that you were saying one year ago or two years ago about the Liberals. So what is new and specific about these criticisms that were serious enough to warrant leaving the deal right now? Uh, one of the important things that I've mentioned in this co in, uh, press conference and I think needs to be reiterated is that we've got a lot done. A lot of that we were working on was either passed or was in motion. And so we've completed a lot. Having completed a lot of the work, it became very clear to me that Canadians also need more. And when it comes to the more, that's where Justin Trudeau has shown that he's too beholden to corporate interests to do more. Refused to move forward on steps to tackle corporate greed. It became very clear to me that he's not going to do what's necessary to lower the cost of groceries for Canadians. Not going to do what's necessary to lower... The, the rents for Canadians that are dealing with corporate landlords. And given the serious threat of Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives who want to cut and gut the things that we rely on, who want to destroy our healthcare system, completely eradicate a, a, the universal healthcare system. That's the goal of Pierre Polyev. Given these serious threats and how weak the Liberals and Justin Trudeau are, we, we need to be the ones ready to fight back. And so we've ripped up the agreement, we're ready for an election, and when that election comes, the choice is going to be between the cuts of Pierre Paul, you have the Conservatives, or the hope of new Democrats to build a better future. We have time for our last question. We will go to David Aiken with Global News. Please go ahead. No, we're just letting anyone ask questions these days, hey, on David. All right, and thank you very much for that last one. I appreciate the moderator's sort of indulgence, and I appreciate your patience, Claire, Norm, and everybody else standing there with you for uh, giving uh, Jugmeet the grilling here. I'm going to double barrel them on behalf of Western Canadian New Democrats, let me put it to you, there's no way you're going to cause a federal election this fall, not a chance, because BC New Democrats will be furious, way more important to re-elect Premier Eby. Carla Beck has got a chance to beat Scott Moe. Saskatchewan New Democrats would be furious with your caucus if you took away money, volunteers, and resources. So that's the one thing I want to get you to comment on. It's sort of Kyle or uh, Alain Bazzetti's question. And two, you're one of your senior MPs, Gord Johns, we love Gord, and Gord said this, and I'm going to quote it back to you. My constituents have given me plenty to work on, including infrastructure, shipbreaking regulations, reconciliation, mental health. Quote, my work isn't done, and forcing a third election in five years isn't very high on my list. So, as I say, two things. Two premiers and leaders, leaders out there, they don't want a federal election. Neither does a senior member of your caucus. You're going to vote to support every single government bit of legislation, in my view, this fall. Correct? Uh, like I said before, we've ripped up the agreement with Justin Trudeau. 
And because we ripped up the agreement, we know very well that that means that a question of an election is more likely. And we are ready for an election. We are going to make a decision based on each vote as it comes to us. Not afraid of the outcome of those votes. We're going to make a decision based on what's in the best interest of Canadians. Whatever the vote is, whatever the issue is, we're going to make a decision that's in the best interest of Canadians. And we are ready for an election. And that election is going to be about a choice. And I almost want you to say it with me. The choice is about conservatives who are going to cut or new Democrats who are going to take care of you, who are going to have your back. Conservatives who want to let their corporate buddies rip you off even more, jacking up the cost of your rent and your groceries, or new Democrats who want to lower the cost of your rent and your groceries. That's the choice in this next election.